of Liberator. Both stood still, staring at the other and waiting for their opponent to make the first move. Useless. All of you. Narita bent down and picked up one of the swords that her men had dropped. The reason why keep you clods around is so that I don't have to do this kind of work. With sword in hand, she advanced forward while holding it in an attacking position. She drove it forward for a straight lunge, only to have a quick swing from Liberator knock it out of her hand. Ah, she groaned as she shook out the sting from her fingers. How can a tiny Zywaon girl like you swing that blade with so much power? Practice Mwa said bluntly. Now call off your pet. We will be leaving with the jewelry. I hate to make things messy for whoever works for the tavern. The rest of my gang will be back any moment once they put out that fire that you two caused. There's no reason for us to let your friend go. We'll just wait it out. Do you really think you can stand up to the entirety of the cutthroats? Even with your special powers. She's right, Mwa. Yilch whispered. Despite the ghost floating right next to her face, she kept staring at Narita. You don't have much time left in your purifier form. Neither does Tama. Another confident grin grew on Narita's face. I just heard everything that little bud of yours said. Oops. Yilch put his hands over his mouth and slowly moved himself behind Mwa. That makes it even easier. In a couple of minutes, you'll be defenseless. That means there's no need to compromise with you. Narita stepped closer to her snake and Tama. Pierce. Make sure she doesn't get away. But don't kill her. I just don't want Tama causing any disruptions. The cobra turned around, tightening his hold once more, making his captive wince in agony. I am warning you. Mwa said shakily. She crossed Liberator in front of her body and angled it towards Narita. Warning me of what? Pierce has got your friend. Your transformation will only last so long. Face it, your friend ruined your entire plan. You won't pose a threat in a couple of minutes. Or seconds. Whatever power you have is only temporary. She then waved her hand towards the snake. Now move over so I can get to those necklaces. With some help from Narita, the snake was able to roll over just enough for her to pull the bag out from underneath him. Don't let her get them, Mwa. Yilch whispered in panic. The purifier brought her right arm back before propelling herself forward. The tip of Liberator became engulfed in a purple aura. The tip of her aura drive spell connected with Narita's side, creating a round purple explosion that sent her skidding across the floor. The blast also sent Tama tumbling in the opposite direction with Pierce still wrapped around her. His grip loosened from the impact, giving Tama enough freedom to escape the hold. She jumped to the ground, grabbing her bow in the process. While kneeling, she drew another magical arrow and struck an advancing Horus in the forehead. The attack sent him on his back with his arms spread out across the floor. Meanwhile, Narita lay on her side, groaning out of pain. She straightened her body just enough to see the bag of necklaces laying on the floor, equidistant between her and Mwa. The semstress ran forward, her free hand sticking out to grab the beacons. A purple liquid dripped in front of her, making a sizzling sound as it bubbled on top of the wooden floor. I forgot to mention. Narita said with an almost sadistic giggle. Did you know that the Manolazo Cobra can spit acid? It's not strong enough to burn through flesh, and bone. But if it stays on your skin for even a few seconds, it's enough to make it feel like that part of your body has been in a furnace. And once it breaks through the skin, the poison infects the victim with a paralyzing poison that can last for days at just the right quantity. Or it will just kill you outright if you take in too much. The cutthroat leader clumsily stood up straight holding on to the area where she had been struck by Mwara's aura drive. You're on borrowed time. I know it and you know it. Give it up now, kid. We're not as heartless as you think we are. Cooperate and maybe we can start talking about lightening up your punishment. Mwara's eyes remained locked with those of the snakes. 
he opened its jaws to be twice the size of Mwara's head. More of the purple acid poured from his mouth and onto the wooden floor, making the sizzling sound more intense. Apologies Mwa said softly, her eyes still focused on the snake. But I have a duty to uphold. The purifier performed a rising slash, using an uppercut to carry the force. The edge of the blade cut through the snake cleanly, making a loud zip as the weapon shredded through scales and flesh. Pierce's mouth remained agape, however motionless as his head tumbled backwards. The rest of his body followed suit, crumbling into one coiled pile. Pierce. Narita shouted from the top of her lungs. She stretched out one hand towards the now-deceased snake as tears streamed down her reddened face. She took one step before falling on her knees again, her hand still reaching as if she were trying to grab Pierce. Why would you? The cutthroat leader cut her sentence off as she inched forward with quivering lips. Her eyes remained focused on the corpse of her pet rather than the Mwa, who stood triumphant over the slain cobra. With cold eyes, she watched as Narita continued to crawl forward, unable to form a coherent word as she stared at the animal's remains. Grab the beacons and let's get going. Tama said as she put her hands on Mwara's shoulders. Right. Mwa quickly snatched the pouch off the ground and followed Tama towards the exit. A cutthroat entered, perplexed at the scene. While running, Tama fired another arrow, hitting the man at the door in the chest and making him fumble backwards and out into the streets. With the path clear, Tama left the tavern with Mwa and Yilch right behind her. Dot murmurings echoed throughout the area as the crowd of cutthroats traveled from their excursion to deal with the burning stable back towards the tavern. Both Mwa and Tama took one more look down the hill and watched as Kaligan soon filled. We need to get as much distance between us and them as possible. Tama said, leading the run uphill. You got the beacons. Mwa held the pouch up and nodded. Let's get out of here before they start chasing. Tama turned around, now sprinting up crooked path to the higher section of Faro Port. After what you just did, that entire gang is going to be out for blood. I know Mwa replied. She took one last look down at the tavern. The stable next to it was no longer burning. By the entrance, she could see a few men step out, each one turning their heads fervently. At least their deadliest member will no longer be a threat. Both women continued up through the crooked passageways of the lower part of Faroport. Despite having been on the run for what seemed like an eternity, neither one looked back during their sprint. Mwa came to a halt first, bringing herself to a complete stop as she pressed one arm against the wall. She dropped Liberator to the ground and placed her now free hand on her knee as she hunched over to regain her breath. Tama stopped as well, turning around as she brushed back her wavy brown hair. I can't believe, it worked. Tama said as she paced around in a small circle. She continued to inhale rapidly. During her resting, another white flash obscured her. Once the light faded, her clothing returned to normal. She looked at her arms and then her legs, her face bearing a look of disappointment upon seeing her original attire on her body. That's it. She then looked at Mwa who was dressed in her purifier ensemble. Why does yours last longer than mine? Yilch flew in front of Tama, waving his hand. Oh. I can explain that to you. But maybe when you have more energy. It's a lot to take in and you'll need to stay focused to remember it all. The semstress picked herself up off the wall and shook her head. Did you just say? that you did not believe it worked. Tama gestured to herself with her thumb. Me. Yes, you. You just said that a few seconds ago. Oh, right. I'll be honest. I didn't have full faith in that plan. But see what confidence can do. I was able to convince you to go along. Mwa clenched her fists. She closed her eyes and took in a deep breath through her nose before letting it out through her mouth. I will forget you just said that. Because the plan worked. But from now on, we will have to take a vote. Yilch will decide if there ever is a tie. Sounds fun. Yilch interjected. 
Mua took out the pouch and emptied the remaining beacons into the palm of her hand. A single necklace fell out, a lone rounded sapphire stone. All three closed in on the beacon, staring at the soul jewel. Is that the only one? Tama asked. Wasn't there a purple one too? I, think so. Mua replied hesitantly. Yep. There were three Yulch said, pressing his thumb and fingers across his perfectly round chin. You two each have one. Then the one Mua is holding. Looks like the amethyst necklace got left behind in the scuffle. After all of that, we still failed Mua said as her entire body went into a slump. Then the bright light engulfed her, putting her back into her normal attire. I wouldn't go that far Yulch said. He hovered over Mwara's shoulder and let his hand slip through her back as he mimicked the motion of a pat. The cutthroats only have one beacon. That's a lot better than them having all three. But it is worse than them having none. Mwa snapped. Yulch flew backwards, shivering from Mwara's mean glare. And we need to talk about how you almost got both of us killed. It was an accident Yulch replied putting his arms close to his body as he shivered. I'm sorry. You gave away our cover. We could have been in and out if you would have just remembered that Narita and her snake could see you. I was worried about Tama. So you called out her name aloud. I, I. The ghost continued to tremble as his big eyes grew even larger. His mouth quivered up and down as the ghost let his arms dangle straight down. Mwa. Tama called out. The semstress turned around, still looking angered. Everything worked out in the end. Give the little guy a break. You are one to talk. Mwa turned around and gave Tama the same frustrated expression that she gave Yilch. If you decided to take the safe route home, we would have never gotten into this ordeal in the first place. Sorry for taking you to the bathhouse to get washed up after being crammed inside a crate for who knows how long. If we had skipped that part, then I would have had more time to get some sails in before getting robbed by the Genkins. Oh. And wasn't it you that decided to show of your precious beacons to all of Faroport? You were practically inviting the cutthroats to come around and rob us. In Taipan, I did not have to worry about thieves robbing me with every step I took. Tama turned her head slowly from side to side, spreading her arms wide. You notice something Mwa? This isn't Taipan. I know. Mwa stomped her foot and wadded up her fists, letting them dangle to her sides. I wish I was back home instead of this filthy, horrible island. A lot of good wishing is going to do you. Tama shot back. Why don't you just, as Tama took another step closer to Mwa, Yilch flew in between the two, spreading his arms across as his eyes fervently darted between both women. Stop. Stop. There's no need for you two to start fighting now. Both of you made it out fine and we still have one more beacon. I'm just disappointed as you are that the other one is in the possession of the cutthroats but having lost one is a whole lot better than losing all three. Don't you two agree? Mwa and Tama both turned their heads to the side, avoiding eye contact with one another. Yes both women simultaneously in a drawn-out fashion. Good. Remember, you aren't enemies. You're friends. It's only been two days and how many times have you helped each other out? The hunter chuckled. A lot. Exactly. Now, it doesn't matter whose fault it was that the beacons got stolen. All that matters now is that it's in safe hands again. I suppose so Mwa replied. She looked to the ghost with narrowed eyes. I still do not have a grasp on this purifier business. Not only with the transformation, but with the responsibilities that accompany it. If defending these beacons and making sure that they stay out of the possession of the wrong people is a crucial part, then perhaps I am not suited for this. No, no, no. Don't say that. You have done a great job so far. Trust me, Mwa. You have what it takes. He put a hand on her shoulder and then turned his head to face Tama. You too. Every purifier's journey is a rough start. Nobody starts off mastering anything in life, right? 
Yulch continued to maintain eye contact with Tama. By the way she looked back at the ghost, she was intent on listening to what he had to say. You weren't an expert hunter the first time you stepped into the forest, were you? Nope Tama said with a wag of her head. I already told Mwa about my disastrous first hunt. And you, Mwa? Could you sew a full gown from the first time you were given a needle and some thread? Of course not. So why should being a purifier be any different? It's one of things that takes a lot of time and a lot of experience just to become competent. You two know that I've been doing this since before your great-grandparents were born, and there are still things that I'm learning. But what I can say for certain is that you two have done amazing so far. Why? Because we are still alive. Mwa said with some sarcasm. Exactly. Yilch bobbed up and down. I like the way you think, Yilch. Always looking at the bright side Tama replied. We need more people like that in Faroport. Thank you. The ghost took his hand off Mwara's shoulder and hovered roughly a foot in front of the semstress face. Mwa. Don't let a small bump in the road deter you from greatness. Mwa grinned. That sounds like something my father would have said. Although, if what just we went through is a small bump then I dread of what the more serious obstacles will look like. That's where practice and getting stronger comes in. That battle may have seemed like a life or death situation, but in time, encounters like that will be a breeze. Yilch lifted one hand and snapped his fingers, but no sound came out. Seems like we'll need a lot of practice to get to that point Tama added. Even when I was a purifier, Pierce still overpowered me. I was helpless until Mwa rescued me. I could have died on the first day. It happens Yulch said his arms hung low. Both Mwa and Tama gave the ghost wide-eyed stares. Not often. Rarely, actually. Probably only once now that I really think about it. And it's a complicated story. But I was new to the job back then. With me around, you two will be just fine. What do you say, Mwa? Tama stuck out her hand, requesting for the semstress to shake it. Want to put our little spat behind us and focus on being purifiers instead? With a firm grip, Mwa shook her hand. Absolutely. I was just a bit frustrated is all. But I have calmed down now. Good. The best part of this job is seeing friendships bloom. Yilch closed his eyes as he grinned from non-existent ear to non-existent ear. We'll have to go over some of the basics, Tama. Mwa and I have already gone through them, but it couldn't hurt for her to hear about them a second time. After that, it will be a while before either one of you can access your purifier forms again, so it might be best to lay low for about half a day or so. Let's see those stats again Tama. The hunter did as Yulch asked, closing her eyes and casting insight. Name Tama Lesmala Class Sniper Element Light Rank 2 Current Weapon, S Solstice, Technique, Spell. S deadly line, 4 vigor points, lethality 8 proficiency 10 vitality 100 guard 8 agility 15 vigor 10 are these, good. Tama asked. You're just a rank 2 purifier right now. You're nothing too special when compared to others with potential once they transform. But you're a formidable threat to most people and creatures. I'm guessing it will be like what you said before. With some practice and more experience I'll get even stronger, right? Yep. Just look at Mwa. She's only gone up two ranks and she's already seen quite a bit of improvement since she first put on that beacon. Name Mwa Luhavun Class Martial Artist Element Chi Rank 3 Current Weapon, S Liberator, Offense, Spell, S Aura Drive. 4 Vigor Points, Lethality 15 Proficiency 12 Vitality 80 Guard 8 Agility 10 Vigor 12 Those experience fragments did make a difference Mwa replied. I felt confident when I slashed through Pierce with Liberator. She mimicked the same motion that she used to slay the giant snake. And you managed to stay transformed longer too. Even if it's only by a few minutes, that can mean the difference between life and death. The more that I use my purifier form, 
the more I think Vigor might be the best option to focus on improving. Being able to transform sooner as well as longer makes all the difference. Mua then tapped her chin before casting insight to take a look at her skill table. That's what I'm thinking too Tama replied. But it might be a good idea for us to also focus on different areas. That way we can tackle a wider variety of situations. Ultimately, it's up to you to decide how to spend your experience fragments Yulch said. He then faced Tama, floating at her eye level. But now that you've been explained what each of the branches are for, do you have any other questions you'd like to ask? Maybe learn a few things before deciding what to invest your fragments into. Yeah. Looks like I have access to a spell. I've never dabbled in magic. How would I go about casting Deadly Line? Tell her, Mwa Yulch said, tilting his head enough to look at the semstress beside him. Just focus. In the same way that you summoned your weapon. It is not hard to do after you cast it the first time. Tama bobbed her head. I see. Any idea as to what it does? The only way to find out is to use it Yulch replied. Great. Looks like I won't be seeing that new ability a few hours from now. Sorry you spent a lot of your first time as a purifier wrapped up in a snake's clutches. Usually, purifiers at least get a chance to see their combat spells in action at least once during the first transformation. But if it helps, you can save your fragments for later in case you want to see how Deadly Line works in case you think it'll determine how you want to spend them. Not a bad idea. Just make sure you keep your class in mind. Looks like you're a sniper. That means you specialize in long distance attacks, so putting some points into agility will help you get out of danger as well as reaching good vantage points. But of course, a good shooting spot won't be too effective if you're not doing enough damage for it to be worth it. Or if your proficiency is so low you end up missing a shot and you give your location away. That's a lot to think about Tama said as she stroked her chin with her finger. I'm really worried about spending these things now that I know once I use them up, I don't get them back. You'll get more eventually. So don't stress out about spending them one way or another. No matter what you put them in, you'll become stronger regardless. Makes sense. Tama blinked a few times and stretched her arms above her head. I think I'll play it safe for now and hold on to the few fragments I have. That way I can have a better idea of how I best to spend them. Being bound by a man-eating cobra really hinders your experience Mwa said with a sly smile. So I do not blame you for holding on to your fragments. All right, Mwa. I see how it is. Tama smiled back, pointing a finger towards Mwa's face. Didn't expect you to be so witty. But I'll give you a warning. Us Banwans are known for our tongues. You think you've got snooky comments. I've only been going easy on you because you're a guest, lass. Wait a second now. I was just trying to be friendly. Mwa raised both of her hands in front of her, almost as if she were surrendering. You know. To show no hard feelings between us. If there is one thing us as Iwaons lack, it is a strong sense of humor. Too bad, Mwa. Should have thought about that before. Tama then winked at the semstress. Don't worry. I won't get you now. But the next time to you mess up, I'll be there to capitalize on it. She's right, Mwa Yulch said while facing her. I've been to Banwa my fair share of times. Those people there are brutal when it comes to insults. If I were you, I think I'd rather take my chances with the cutthroats. Wait. Tama I was just joking around. You did great back there, especially for your first time. The hunter turned around crossed her arms but maintained her friendly smile. Too late. With a huff, Mwa shook her head. Fine. I am a purifier. I have taken on giant snakes, grizzly wolves, and even genkins. Surely I can take an insult from a barn one. Yeah. Keep telling yourself that. I really can. Let's focus what we should do next, shall we? 
before you say something that might give me something to work with. Fair enough. All three pairs of eyes looked away, each one pondering in quiet for the next step in their plan. I remember you mentioning something about someone that would know about the creature we found inside the Grizzly Wolf. Oh, right. Chasen over in the governor's building. We should still have some time to see him today. Is that where we are heading next? Or should we try to get another sample to show him? Hopefully a description will be enough. That thing had a very distinct look to it. If Chasen had seen it before, I'm sure he'd be able to recall it from memory. But there is one place we need to go to before stopping by the governor's place. Let me guess Mwa said with narrowed eyes. Lug. You know it. Poor guy is probably worried sick right about now. It's only been a few hours, Tama. You think that makes a difference to him? Ever since I found the poor lad, we haven't been separated for more than a day. What do you think, Yilch? How much time do you think you have left with us? Mwa asked the ghost. I'm feeling fine. I've got a plenty of stamina to hang around. A trip back to Tama's place will do you just fine then. We need you to be here with us when we go to visit this friend of Tama's. I know Narita is not happy about what I did to Pierce. I would not be surprised if she has sent a group of her men to hunt us down. The hunter froze, taking in a deep breath as if she were panicking. Oh no. You're probably right she said with worry. I don't think the cutthroats know where I live. She then looked behind her towards the wet and empty alley. But if they manage to follow us, and find out my home. Tama pressed her back against the wall and rubbed the sides of her foreheads. It just dawned on me. We can't go around Faroport anymore. Why? Mwa asked. Because of what happened to Pierce. The cutthroats will never let us live that down. The next time we meet, they're going to want to kill us. Then it is a good thing that we have these beacons to protect ourselves. If they were smart, then they would think twice about attack a pair of purifiers after what happened to that snake of theirs. But Lug can't transform. He's practically defenseless. Now I really can't leave him alone. Tama groaned as she buried her forehead into the palm of her hand. I wish I thought this through sooner. I'm telling you to. Now the Pierce has been killed, Lug is going to be Narita's number one target. She's going to make me want to feel the same way she does now. Even worse. Wouldn't put it past them to take him out, chop him up and force feed him to me in a broth. Mwa grabbed the hunter by her shoulders and pulled her straight to face her. Look at me Tama. If that is the case, then it is on us to make sure Narita and her gang never succeed. While still holding on to Tama's shoulders, the semstress turned to the ghost lingering beside her. What is the purpose of a purifier again, Yilch? To fight great evils, he exclaimed with enthusiasm. Exactly. And robbing people and threatening them with murder is evil, is it not? Tama nodded. It is. Exactly. Remember, you wanted to be a purifier, Tama. Putting your life in danger as well as though around you are just part of the price you have to pay. I. I know. Good. Mwa patted Tama on her shoulder. You are a purifier now. Time to act like one. Tama opened the door to her room. The moment it was open enough, Lug came barreling through and stood on his legs while his front two paws landed on Tama's chest. His long tongue came out and began licking the hunter's cheek. Calm down boy. It's only been a few hours. With a few pats on the side, the brillic got back on the ground with all four legs. Tama waved her hands, shooing the brillic back inside the room. Tama let out a long sigh and sat herself on the edge of her mattress, making it tilt to her side from the sudden shift in weight. Mwa entered next, leaning against the opposite wall while Yilch travelled through the closed door and lingered in the center. I don't even want to take him outside right now. Tama stared at Lug, watching him lick his hind leg. Those cutthroats are probably looking for us right now. 
and without being able to access our purifier forms for the rest of the day, we're pretty much open targets. That means we will have to adjust our schedule to accommodate. Lug will have to make do on his own for a little while longer if you are so worried about cutthroats getting to him. The hunter slid off her bed and onto her knees. She reached forward and took the animal by his neck and pulled him close, resting her check against the thin fur of his head. With some patting, Lug opened his mouth wide and began to yawn. Good thing he's so lazy. I guess staying inside all day has really drained him. Good. While he is resting, we can go meet this person you mentioned earlier. Fine. That works with me. I can already tell Lug is about to go down any minute. I think a little snack and some water should put him to sleep for a good while. Tama reached under her bed and pulled out a small jar of the same jerky that she had given Mwa the first time they had met. These are the emergency rations. Better to use them now than never I suppose she said as she unscrewed the top. Lug's nostrils gravitated towards the savory scent. With one chomp, he snatched the piece of meat out of Tama's hand and downed it in one bite. You said that this person resides at the governor's estate. Mwa asked, still perched against the wall. She watched Lug open his mouth wide and let out a lengthy yawn. Will it be difficult to meet with him if he works for the town's leader? The hunter wagged her head. Not at all. I visit him all the time. The governor's estate is enormous with a lot of wings and adjacent buildings for all manner of subordinates. Chasen is the designated advisor of environment. It may sound like a prestigious position, but it's nothing special. It's just a title for someone who knows a lot about the woods and life in the water. It's not like he makes any of the big decisions. Once Lug put his head on the floor, Tama rose to her feet. Occasionally the governor will ask him a question or two about the island's wildlife in regards to policies about expanding territory into the forest or what restrictions to put on hunting. But at the end of the day, his word doesn't mean much. Not like they listen to any of his suggestions anyway. Chasen is only there because Remcroft requires someone to fill his position. Ah. An advisor for the sake of being an advisor. We had a few people in similar positions back at my village. They were usually relatives of the leader and were given easy tasks while still living a relatively luxurious lifestyle. It's the same way here. Almost all the advisor positions in Faroport can be traced back to having some kind of close tie with the governor. Chasen is the governor's nephew. But he's one of the few people over there that is actually familiar with their assigned position. And he's one of the friendlier ones, too. The rest of them are all snoots that are more concerned with coming off as important rather than actually doing anything important. Will we stand out there? Mwa looked down at her dirtied robes. They will be able to tell that I am a foreigner with a single glance. And I mean no offense, but I do not think you would pass for someone of high standing either. Tama looked at her outfit as well. We'll get some odd looks, that's for sure. But Chasen doesn't usually dress like the rest of the people working for the governor. He is a man of nature, after all. Fancy dress shirts don't do you much good when you're going up against the elements. Only time I've seen him dress nice is when he's trying to get in a woman's good graces. I see. As long as we do not get any more unwanted attention, I am happy. And is the distance to the governor's estate far from here? No. We could make it there in about four to five minutes. That is if we take shortcuts through the alleys but I'm thinking we should take the long route through the more crowded sections of town. What a surprise. I was going to suggest the same thing. I'm ready to head out whenever you are. Just let me get some water ready for Lug and we can be on our way. Tama moved to the far corner of the room and picked up a stained metal dish. I'm going to fill this up at the fountain. I'll be right back. Asterisk asterisk the metal tray landed with a light clang next to the dormant Brillick's head. Despite the noise and the small splash of water that landed on his face, Lug remained asleep. Tama clapped her hands and then looked at Mwa. 
Let's just hope he doesn't drink too much. He's not good at holding his water. And getting that scent out of wooden floors isn't easy, lass. Moa stared at Lug with an expression that had an unpleasant blend of disgust and worry. And it will be my turn to spend the night next to him, let's head out now, shall we? Tama nudged Moa on the shoulder towards the door. Let's. Tama let Moa and Yul check it first. Once they were out, she stood in the doorway and checked to make sure Lug was asleep before stepping out herself. Seeing that the Brillic was in a deep sleep, she gently closed the door behind her. Hopefully Lug can hold it in for a while longer. Didn't give him too much. I would rather not think about that at the moment, seeing as how I will be the one sleeping on the floor tonight. I have enough things to worry about for now. Right. Let's just focus on getting to the governor's estate for now. Since we'll be taking the long route, we'll have to keep up a brisk pace to make up for the lost time. Lead the way, Tama. Mwa stepped to the side, angling her hand towards the stairs with an open palm and a courteous bow. You're so polite, Mwa Tama replied playfully. Wouldn't expect anything less from someone of Zaiwo. What can I say? Manners are a crucial part of culture. Separates us from the brutes that are always trying to invade. Brutes, ha. Huh? Tama replied with a raised eyebrow. Aren't you the one that decapitated a giant snake not too long ago? The hunter then hurried down the stairs. Mwa followed right behind, making a rapid series of clomps as they worked their way down the steps. Fine. You got me there. But I am being honest when I say that I was a much different person before I became a purifier. Yilch made sure to stay close behind, lingering only a few feet away from Mwa. I don't know. Tama's got a point, he said with a lively cadence. She didn't see how you fought on that boat against that Genkan. You may look and act polite, but you certainly don't fight that way. Hey. Mwa said while looking at the ghost that hovered behind her. Tama was already out the front door, holding it wide open as she waited for the semstress and Yulch to go through. Whose side are you on anyway? I'm with the purifiers. And that means both of you. So I'll just have to stick with the truth for now. No picking a side for me. He pressed his hand against what would be his heart and lifted the opposite arm upwards as if he were making an oath. You'll hear nothing but honesty from a spirit. We can chat on our way to the governor's estate Tama interjected, rushing the other two by wagging her hand. But we really need to get going now. She makes a good point, Yilch. I do not want to be laying down on a soaked floor if it is avoidable. All three stayed close together as they traveled through Faroport under Tama's leadership. The town was busier than the day prior as the warmth from the sun began to evaporate the rain from the day prior with citizens continuing on with their daily lives. Tama pushed through the sea of Faroporters while Mwa stayed as close to her as she could, keeping an eye on Tama's curly brown hair that stood out among the crowd. Yilch floated above the hustle and bustle, letting his gaze wander around the surroundings. How much longer until we make it to the estate? Yilch shouted out. Tama paused the procession, turning her head upwards to the sound of the ghost's voice. It's in the center of the island. So, a bit of a walk from here Tama said as loud as she could to overcome the ruckus of the city. But this is why I usually like to go through the alleys. I get to miss out on trying to worm my way through all these people. Mwa felt the hair from the arm of a bulky man brush past her face. Accompanying the fuzzy arm was a pungent aroma that made her nose curl. I am starting to think that it might have been best to take our chances with the cutthroats and gone through the shortcut. Even all the rot in the alley has a better smell compared to your average pharaoh porter. We'll just have to lie low by being around as many as possible for the time being. Cutthroats get mad and then they get even. And you took out Pierce. That only means they're going to be looking for blood the next time we meet. We cannot just hide indefinitely, Tama. Sooner or later, we will have to confront them again. I know, I know. But seems like we'll have to be aiming for later. We are not ready to take them on at our rank. 
in a few more minutes of walking. The crowd began to disperse. The cobbled and cracked ground of the main area of the town gave way to clean and well-kept stone. The sand in the cracks disappeared, turning into soil with patches of grass jutting out. The attire of the people began to shift as well, individuals wore more elaborate tops and fancy pants as opposed to the dirty and tattered rags of the average pedestrian. The buildings of the area were larger and more ornate along with wider spaces in between them. Tama made a quick scan of the surrounding area, her body shaking as she stepped further into the center area of the island. Fortunately for us, law enforcement is actually present here. That means we're less likely to come across you-know-who in this area. These buildings look nice. Mwara's head tilted backwards as she stood on the tips of her toes to watch the smoke rise out of the chimneys. Yeah, well, don't get used to the scenery. This is where the upper-class folk live. They're not too fond of people from the lower part of Faroport loitering around. They're more than willing to call the Faroport guard on anyone that looks suspicious. Tama turned around and eyed Mwa. The hunter's eyes slowly moved up the length of the semstress body before she put on a large frown. Speaking of suspicious, what? Mwa said nervously. A Ziwaon would definitely stick out. Back down in the market center, nobody would be concerned about someone from a warring country if they were accompanied by a local. But here in the governor's district, I'm worried that might be a different story. Wouldn't put it past the wealthier people up here to cry spy the moment they lay eyes on you. Then what do you suggest, Tama? This seems like the kind of detail that would have been important to know prior to our departure. The hunter scratched her head, pondering what to do as she looked up at the cloudy sky. She snapped her fingers as an idea came across her mind. Got it. She then took off her cloak and wrapped it around Mwara's shoulders. Tama then took the hood and pulled it over Mwara's eyes. Hey, the semstress exclaimed. Just play along, lass. Tama pressed one hand against Mwara's back and made her hunch forward. Now hold that pose. What convoluted scheme have you come up with this time? Tama tugged on the top of the hood, giving Mwara just enough vision to see the smiling hunter standing before her. My plan at the tavern worked, didn't it? Yes. But we would not have needed that plan if you did not have the idea to cut through the alley to save a few minutes. One out of two isn't bad. The hunter let the hood droop down, obscuring Mwara's face once more. Keep that hunched posture. Maybe cough a couple of times. And whatever you do, don't let anyone see your face. Understand. You are going to pass me off as sickly. Mwa replied, following the instructions Tama had given her. Her upper body slumped over as she placed one hand over her mouth. Yep. There's a special healer on the governor's estate. If anyone tries to stop us, I'm just going to tell them that you have a highly contagious disease. Even the guard will turn around the other way if it means not getting sick. I hope this works, Tama Mwa muttered. She placed the inside of her face against her mouth and let out another cough. I really do. I do not want to get arrested for being a spy. Spending my days in a cell is the last thing I need right now. You trusted me on the last one. You can trust me again. Just keep your head down and follow close to me. Tama walked slowly across the smooth stone. The path they traveled along was wide, allowing for plenty of room for the relatively few patrons that utilized it. The men and women that walked by in their silk and satin clothing all looked at the pair of women walking along the edge of the stone trail with dubiety before going on with their business. As Mwa kept her body hunched forward, Tama walked in front with exaggerated steps. One leg would step forward in longer stride while the other limped behind her. She let her arms dangle at her sides swaying from side to side as she continued to stagger along. Doing as Tama told, Mwara's head remained low. Her eyes remained elevated just enough to watch Tama continue her charade, making her wince from embarrassment. With all her strength, Mwa fought the urge to make a remark and maintained the posture that was instructed of her. The group entered further into the governor's district. 
The path became narrower, forcing them to walk closer to the other pedestrians using the sidewalk. Those that walked by kept their eyes focused on Mwa as they stepped off the trail and onto the grass. As they passed other Faro porters, their whisperings were just loud enough to be heard. That Dr. Midge needs to head down to the lower section of Faro Port. I'm tired of all the ill coming through here. Of all the times to bring the sickly, they chose to come by in the middle of our walk. She looks like a goner to me. The comments continued. Mwa began to angle her head to the side to get a better look at those who were addressing her until an abrupt stop by Tama put the procession to a complete halt. The hunter stepped back and leaned next to Mwa's ear. Just our luck Tama whispered. Looks like the Pharaoh port guard is here. Just keep doing what you're doing, Mwa. You play ill really well. Mwa faked a cough and patted her chest. Thank you. I try. She lifted her head enough to see the men on the path ahead. Underneath the long and vibrant green leaves of the weeping willows that crowded the edge of the path stood two men clad in chain mail. Sheathed swords dangled from their hips. The metal of their armor rattled as they readjusted their upright posture. Despite being straight ahead and Tama and Mwa being the only ones facing them, the two guards didn't appear to notice them. Rather, they stayed focused on the part of the road that traveled deep into the distance. Depending on who's working, these Faro port guard can be either friendly, or real sticks in brillic dung. Amwa replied. She faked another cough. Tama placed one hand over her head to block out the sun from view. I don't recognize either of the two fellows ahead so it could go either way. As usual, just play along. Understood. What about me? Yulch asked, hovering between the two women. Is there anything I can do to help? Yeah. Don't distract us Tama replied. We're going to have to keep calm and steady. Things could turn bad fast if we're not careful. Tama continued her limp, making her motions even more exaggerated the closer she came to the two guards blocking the path. Mwa maintained a short distance behind her, making sure that her head was kept as low as possible. Are you lost, M? the guard on the right asked. He moved his hands from behind his back to in front of his chest. His face was covered in a thin stubble, giving the look of a man in his mid-twenties. He tilted his head at a slight angle, staring at Tama in a perplexed manner. I, I. Tama began. She took in a few deep and rapid breaths as she looked at Mwa. My friend. She's sick. Isn't that right? The hunter nudged Mwa with her elbow. She coughed on command and bobbed her head up and down. I suppose that means you're trying to get through here to see the healer, eh? Yes sir. The second guard walked past Tama and towards Mwa. The semstress focused on the shadow approaching her before letting her legs tremble. The man's hand touched the cloth of the hood, ready to pull it back. I'd advise against that if I were you Tama called out. Oh yeah. The second guard replied. His fingers still clutched onto the top of the hood. Why would that be? She came in from Darrowsville. You know how they have had a hard time dealing with the drowsy river flu. The only known natural treatment is in a little flower found only in that part of the world. Tama placed one arm across the back of Mwara's shoulders and pulled her in close for an embrace. The semstress coughed again, making the guard release his hold on the hood. It's very contagious. Not quite fatal but it will make your existence miserable for as long as you have it. Unless you want an endless cough and some runny bowels for the next six months, I suggest you keep as far away as possible. The guard jumped back putting the hand that touched the hood up and shaking it out aggressively. What about you? You're standing right next to her. I think it's too late for me, sir. Tama pressed her hand against her chest, covering her heart. I'm already feeling a weird tingling in my throat and my legs are exhausted just from walking up that path. Fine, you two can go to the estate to see one of the midge doctors. Just... The guard's entire face squinched together as he took another step back. Just stay away from as many people as possible. 
We don't need whatever you two got spreading around here. Tama smiled while sighing with relief. Oh, thank you sir. We'll go straight to their room. Nowhere else. Yeah. Make sure of it. Hopefully you have enough coin to pay the fee. The guard then waved to his partner, making him stand to the side of the path, well underneath the overhanging willow trees don't worry about us. We've been saving up. Tama took Mwara's hand and led her down the stone trail, resuming her exaggerated limp. The guards stared at the two women as they traveled further along the path until they took a turn and were obscured by willow trees. Once the two guards were out of view, there were only the ambient sounds of nature, birds chirped. Leaves rustled from the wind. The hunter ended her charade, stretching her arms above her head as she took in a whiff of the air through her nostrils. You can stand upright for now, Mwa. There's no one around at the moment. Slouching like that isn't good for your posture, anyway. But keep the hood up. Mwa listened to the hunter's words, setting herself upright just enough to get a comfortable view of the world around her. The sudden bright and vivid greens and oranges from the dangling leaves made her stagger back. I am not used to seeing so much, life. Mwa whispered. Her eyes grew in size as she slowly turned her body around to take in more of her surroundings. The chirping birds were perched at the top of the branches, their deep blues almost blending in with the clear sky. Yilch flew up to their level, waving his hand in front of one only to be completely ignored. Chasen is the one that oversees this orchard. I like to come here every once in a while whenever I need to clear my mind. It's beautiful. It is. I would stay here all day if I could, but a lot of the members of the Faroport Guard aren't fond of the idea of people from the lower section of town staying around here for very long. I've been told to scram on more than one occasion. Is this place closed off for everyone who is not from the governor's district? Not officially. But sometimes it seems that way. The wealthy folks won't hesitate to call a guard to get a commoner out of town if they feel threatened. Or if they just don't like you. That is horrible. Mwa raised one hand and brushed a willow leaf with her palm. This place deserves to be enjoyed by everyone. That's what I say. But I'm not the one that helps to line the pockets of the Pharaoh Port Guard. Tama stretched her arms above her head again and tilted her neck from one side to the other. But that is a conversation for another day. I think it's time we start heading out to our actual destination. Maybe once this is all over, if it's all over. I could show you around the other parts of the orchard. Chasen managed to import plants from all over the world here. Mwa readjusted her hood before slumping forward. Zaiwon trees included. Tama walked forward. Yep. Is there a royal fire blossom? Mwa said steadily. A royal fire blossom. Maybe. I think I remember Chasen mentioning something about having some rare Zaiwon seeds in his collection. And that was years ago. The name alone makes it sound elusive. It is. He might have planted it then. The harder it is to find, the more Chasen wants it in this orchard. Mwa darted forward and grabbed Tama's wrist. Would it be all right if we took a short day tour? To see the tree. The semstress gave Tama a nod. Yes. It does not have to be for long. I just want to see it. Sounds like it's important to you. Usually, you'd be all about trying to get our work done as quickly and efficiently as possible, lass. I can make an exception. Besides, we are already here. A quick wink came from Tama. Sure. How can I say no to showing someone a bit of nature? We're going on a tour. Yilch asked as he flew back down from his failed attempt at a conversation with the birds of the willow trees. Don't get too excited, Yilch. There's a specific tree Mwa wants to see before heading towards Chasen's office. The hunter stepped off the trail and pushed aside the branches of the nearby willow tree. As the leaves separated, a long dirt trail was revealed through the foliage. Now if I remember correctly, the trees from other parts of the world should be a straight line from here. 
Tama held out her hand and looked at Mwa. Do you want to lead the way? The semstress pointed at herself. Me. You're the one that knows what Aziwa own royal fire blossom looks like. Oh. Go ahead. Me and Yilch will be right behind you. Mwa obliged. She straightened up her posture and began the trek. The dirt trail was still moist from yesterday's rain, making each of her steps uneven as her foot sank slightly into the ground. Despite the mushy terrain, her pace remained steadfast. The end of the trail came closer as wooden planks embedded with the ground formed a small staircase towards a small soil plot. A wide area of soil was placed on a small plot that was elevated less than a foot higher than the trail. Long wooden planks encircled the area, separating it from the rest of the willow trees. A wide assortment of plants grew from the ground, creating a visual spectacle that swayed gently from a breeze. Every color was visible among the various shades of green of the tree's leaves. Tall trees that jutted far beyond the height of the willows cast long shadows over the smaller but just as colorful shrubs. You see it? Tama asked. Not yet. But I have a feeling it is in there somewhere. Mwa climbed the first step, examining all the plants towards the front of the enclosure. She stuck out one hand as she entered, letting it brush against a white rose. It goes on for a while, Mwa. Chasen has been collecting and maintaining this area ever since I was just a young lass. Tama scurried up the steps and began to walk next to the semstress. Mwara's attention was spent looking for the Ziwaon tree to pay her any mind. What does this blossom plant look like? After a few more steps, the semstress froze. She pulled back the hood of her cloak. She stretched out one arm and pointed towards the furthest point in the orchard. It looks just like that. It's beautiful. Yilch exclaimed while flying through a short bush to make his way to the Ziwaon tree. A thick and sturdy trunk rose from the ground. The color of the wood was a milky white, down from the roots all the way to the thin branches that reached to the sky. Orange and white flowers decorated the canopy. A light breeze passed by, making all the branches sway in unison, mimicking the flickering of a flame. Mwa ran to the tree in Yilch's wake. She stood on the roots of the tree and looked up among the entanglement of blooming flowers with her hand over her eyes. This is the perfect time for the royal fire blossom to start sprouting cherries. I can see why it got its name Tama remarked as she walked around the surrounding shrubbery to get a closer view of the tree for herself. The colors of those flowers are absolutely gorgeous. It really does look like it has been set ablaze. My family had one of these back at my home in Taipan. Mwa reached up towards the closet branch only to stop before touching the plump fruit dangling in front of her fingers. Would Chasen be upset if we ate some of the cherries? Doubt it. Chasen is a rather generous fellow. He wouldn't mind it if we snacked on a couple of pieces of fruit. Even he'd agree that it would be better than just letting them fall the ground to rot. Excellent. The semstress plucked a handful of cherries making a crisp snap as the fruit was severed from the branch. Mwa then cupped her hands together and showed the bounty to Tama. Those look delicious, the hunter said with hungry eyes. They taste as good as they look. Royal ember blossoms are sought after for their fruit. Not only is the tree rare to come by, but they require an excessive amount of attention to keep growing strong. Our family was fortunate enough to have one come into our possession as a gift from one of my father's pupils. We had it for as long as I can remember. Everyone took turns caring for it. It was tedious, making sure the water was just right. Getting rid of creatures that would try to eat it. Cycling out the soil. But every year, the harvest was more than worth the work. We ate what we could and gave the rest to the other of the students of the dojo. Tama took a single cherry out of Mwara's hands and plopped it in her mouth. She chewed a few times, her face showing satisfaction when she got a taste of the fruit's sweet center. She bobbed her head, smiling with eyes opened wide. You weren't lying. This is better than any of the fruit you'll find out in Abbas Forest. I want to try one. Yilch said. 
He let one hand slip through the small mound of cherries in Mwara's palms. But. I assume that you cannot eat Mwara replied, confused. I know said with arms slump by his side. But that doesn't mean I don't want to join in on the fun. Oh, poor Yilch. Tama picked up another cherry and plopped it in her mouth. I guess that's one of the downsides of being an immortal spirit, huh? Don't rub it in. I thought I would never taste one of these cherries again. They are exceedingly rare in Zaiwo, let alone anywhere else in the world. I think I will visit here once I get settled into Faroport more. Chasen wouldn't mind once he finds out that you're a friend of mine. Especially if he knows how important this tree is to you. Thank you. That is a relief. It is nice to know that there is a bit of Zaiwo here in Faroport that I can always visit. She gave the tree a gentle press with the palm of her hand. And I will be conservative with the number of cherries I eat. Looks like you got two favorite places. The bath house and now you've got this ember blossom to help ease your mind. Mwa giggled. Maybe Faroport is not as bad as I had originally anticipated. Eh. I wouldn't go that far, lass. Faroport's got more than its fair share of problems. Like the cutthroats. Yilch called out. Exactly. And that creature you found inside the grizzly wolf that came from the Genka boat the ghost replied. Is that your way of telling us to get a move on? Tama asked with a raised eye. I'm a mentor. That means it's also my duty to make sure that purifiers stay focused on the job at hand. Fine. We get the message, Yilch. Mwa said sarcastically before eating a few more cherries and offering the remainder to Tama. The hunter accepted them and stashed them away inside one of the pouches fastened to her belt. Hope you had fun on your little day tour, Mwa. Now it's back to playing sick the hunter said. Joy. Mwa grabbed her hood and flung it over her head again. The closer we get to the governor's district, the less Zaiwo friendly the people will be. There's a whole lot of love for Remcroft up there and not too much for the country's enemies. Understood. Mwa made sure the hood hid her face and she returned to her hunched and sickly posture. I just hope this charade keeps working. Don't see why it wouldn't. We managed to get past those two guards on the way here. Yes, but those two did not seem too serious about their job. If we are going to get closer to the wealthier part of town, then it would make sense to assume that their security will also be stricter. Tama shrugged her shoulders. Eh. Hey, I've been up there on more than one occasion. Like I said, it depends on whose shift it is. All three traveled through the orchard and ended up on the main path once more. Continuing along the trail, the willows became less dense, giving view to the reclusive part of Faroport. Further up, tall buildings of beige brick with stories upon stories lined the horizon. One structure loomed over the others, containing ornate stained glass windows throughout the numerous towers that surrounded the main section of the building. I assume that is where the governor stays. Mwa poked out and angled her head up enough to look at the peak of the building. A large red and white flag swayed back and forth. You're right. She stays on the top floor. That is, when she's in Faroport. Someone with her kind of money and power would probably spend as little time in Faroport as possible. And what about Chasen? Where is his office? He's got a room in one of the buildings on the other side of the estate. It's a small area where he shares the space with a few other advisors. Tama put a hand on Mwara's back and gently nudged her back down. Now keep up the routine. I can see one of guards by the fence. Tama grabbed the semstress hand and tugged it, guiding her along the path. The sound of the estate became more apparent with a few moments. The distant sound of horse hooves and small chatter grew louder. Surrounding the area was a long stone wall with the entrance blocked off by a metal gate with a single person blocking it. State your business the lone guard demanded. He took out his sword, placing it in front of the large metal gate, blocking the pair from advancing any further. The guard looked younger than the ones down by the willow trees. 
His hair was short, dark red and unruly with a few long strands that dangled in front of his face. The man's beard was just as unkempt with bits going in every which direction, looking short and patchy. I've got a sick one that could use some magical healing. Let me guess he said mockingly. Nothing deadly. Just makes you cough a bit and a case of the runs, right? Mwa began to tremble. She turned her head to Tama to look for a clue as to how to handle the question. Tama didn't notice Mwa's sudden and desperate plea. Her eyes remained locked with those of the god. Both stared at each other with borderline derision as the silence ensued. And who is this you got with ya, the god proclaimed. He grabbed the hood before he could finish his sentence and flicked it back. Mwa scrambled to cover her face with her hands. She quickly turned away, trying to hide her perfectly healthy body away from the god. She looks all right to me. But she's, Tama began, trying to block the god from examining Mwa any more by putting herself in front of the god. She put her hand against his chest to get him to stop, only to be met with a sudden and mean glare from the man. I'm not hearing it. I've got orders from the leader himself to not let anyone in that looks suspicious. He stepped back and clumsily withdrew his sword from the sheath. The guard then pointed the tip towards Tama, struggling to keep it from wagging from side to side. And that means you. Tama pushed away the sword by its flat side. She continued to stare at the guard with an angered look. The man let his arm dangle to his side, still holding on to his sword. His angered expression matched that of Tama as both continued their long, silent glares. Quit playing around, Olsen. Tama's frown immediately inverted and her posture relaxed. You're lazier than Lug. You wouldn't stop us from coming through if we told you personally that we're here to take out the governor. Tama. Mwa blurted out with worry. Don't get yourself in a knot, lass. Tama stood next to the guard and placed her arm across his back. Olsen and I go way back. We've known each other for years. Since we were kids. Olsen added, pointing to himself then to the hunter. The look of worry on the semstress face shifted to embarrassment as her cheeks turned red and her eyes drifted to the side. Do I still need to pretend that I am sick? Mwa asked Tama. This fellow doesn't care. As long you're not doing anything to make him work, he's fine with turning a blind eye. That's how I'm able to spend to so much time up here in the governor's district. I can only get away with it when it's Olsen's shift. The man put his sword back inside the sheath and then used his other his hand to point at his forehead. You call it being lazy, I call it working smart. I get my coin regardless. The guard then faced the hunter. So, who's your friend? Olsen, meet Mwa. She's from a small village in Zaiwo. Both parties extended hands and shook them. I could tell. She's a semstress, so maybe one day she can finally sew up that hole in the middle of your tunic. Tama grabbed part of the fabric that covered Olsen's front, pulling on the aforementioned section. The guard looked down and stared at the gaping hole towards the middle of his outfit. Stop tugging on it. You're going to make it bigger. I'm surprised the captain hasn't gotten on your case about it. He has. Olsen took one hand and smoothed out the wrinkles Tama had made. But I had it just right so that he could only see it up close. Do I still need to pretend to be sick once we get past the gate? Mwa interjected. She kept her hands on the edge of her hood as she shifted her eyes between the two. Or can I stand upright again? Olsen won't snitch on us. That would require him to go to his captain. You know me too well, Tama. Olsen scratched the back of his head, shyly turning his head away from the hunter. What brings you and your new friend to this section of Faroport? We need to meet Jason. Would you happen to know if he's in his office at the moment? I think I saw him roaming the property not too long ago. But I don't know for certain if he's in his office right now. Wonderful. Hopefully he hasn't gone for one his mid-afternoon jaunts. He could be anywhere on the governor's property.
and you know how chatty he can be when he starts talking with one of the other scholars. Tama rolled her eyes. Don't remind me. We could be here all day if things don't go our way. Looking for a bit of advice on something. Hope I'm not coming across as nosy, but I might be able to help you out depending on the circumstances. It is a very important matter. Mwa stepped closer to the other two, taking both of their attention. We need an expert's advice as soon as possible. She's right, Olsen. As much as I'd like to stay here and keep talking, we did come here for a very important reason. And only Chasen's expertise can help us out. Oh. Maybe I could come along with you too. Three people looking for Chasen could find him faster than just two. Don't you have to keep watch of the entrance? Tama asked as she looked at Olsen confused. I don't have to. If I know that there won't be any trouble, that is. Ever since I've worked this position, I don't recall a single serious confrontation happening. Sure, I've had to shoo away a few drunkards and the occasional lost child, but no one bothers to intentionally cause trouble up here. Or do you intentionally not confront it? Tama asked with a raised eyebrow. Hey, you want me to help you or not? You know how Chasen likes to roam and that Zywoans aren't the most well-liked people in this part of the town. If you let me stick with you two, I could keep an eye out for Chasen and at the same time make sure no one knows he comes by and causes you two trouble. I appreciate the offer, lad. Just don't come crying to me if the captain comes by and sees you've abandoned your post. Olsen shrugged his shoulder and waved his hand. The man's not even around at the moment, so I've got nothing to worry about. He's taken the week off for personal reasons. Tama looked at Mwa and then up towards Yilch. The ghost shrugged his short stubby shoulders. Are you fine with Olsen tagging along? Whatever gets us to finding Chasen faster, the better. Olsen took hold of the belt around his waist and gave it a short adjustment so it fit around his waist better. I'm your best bet at finding him. We'll just stop by his office first. As the party moved to the far end of the estate, they traveled past few other upper-class pharaoh porters. Most didn't notice the Zywoan woman, and those who did stare and whisper among themselves were promptly silenced as Olsen placed on hand on his weapon and gave them a cold glare. The short walk ended once Olsen led them to a wide building towards the far end of the estate. The structure was relatively low, only one story in height, being dwarfed when compared to the governor's building itself. Along the walls were a series of square, dark black windows. Olsen stopped in front of the entrance to the building, placing one hand on the handles attached to the tall wooden doors. Chasen's office is right inside. Just take the first, I know how to get there, Olsen. Your friend doesn't. I was just trying to be nice. He then pulled the door open wide and held it back from closing on itself. I get it. And I appreciate it. But I think we can go inside and knock on his door without a full tour of the place. The guard huffed and crossed his arms before propping his back against the wall of the research building. Fine. I'll be waiting here. Just, call me if you get in trouble. Olsen then placed his hand on his sheathed sword. I've been trained in the Pharaoh Port military. I know how to use this thing. Don't hesitate to, both Mwa and Tama giggled. Yilch put one hand in front of his mouth, failing to stop from laughing himself. What's so funny? Nothing, Olsen. Tama waved her in Olsen's direction. I appreciate your concern. But I have a feeling that we would be able to handle ourselves in case something went wrong. We need to get going, Tama Mwa remarked, the smile from her previous giggle still lingering on her face. Of course. Don't go anywhere, Olsen. We'll come back outside and update you. Fine with me. Tama pulled on the other handle to the research building's entrance. She kept it ajar, letting Mwa walk through first. Take the first right and keeping heading straight. His office is at the very end. Without looking behind her, Mwa adhered to Tama's directions. 
She slowly took the right turn as the hunter instructed and began a slow walk towards the end of the hall. Her pace reduced to a crawl as her eyes wandered the narrow cobblestone walls. Tama caught up, standing behind her. Hey Tama the ghost called out. What is it, Ilch? The ghost hovered in front of Tama's face, traveling backwards at the same rate that she walked so he could maintain both eye contact and a steady distance away from her. He looked at her with his typical smug smile as he placed his arms behind his back. That fellow has a thing for you. Olsen. Yep. Ah, that's just him being friendly. I doubt he's got a crush on me. He talks that way to everyone he's close with. You don't understand, Tama. I have been around more than long enough to know when someone is infatuated. I guarantee, 100% that you're on Olsen's mind. What do you think, Mwa? Are you good with romance? No. The semstress shot out bluntly. Fine then, Yilch. What makes you say that? It's all in the eyes. Yilch pointed to his pair of big pupils with his fingers. The way he looks at you when you're not looking at him. And then there's the way he doesn't look at you. It's all very telling. So you give purifier advice as well as tips on dating. Tama said, making her sarcasm more than obvious. Seems like you're the perfect friend to have around. Thank you. I find it that when a purifier's personal life is happier, they tend to be more effective once they transform as well. I thought you did not want us to become too acquainted with others Mwa said dryly. I'm not telling her to get married. I'm just telling her the truth. And this bit of truth just might help her build a bit of confidence. Well, even if I wasn't a purifier, I don't know if I'd be interested to be completely honest. Some people just aren't compatible. They make great friends and that's about it. Yilch sighed. Poor Olsen. From what I could tell, he wants to be more than just friends. We can discuss this later. Tama stood in front of the door at the end of the hallway. She lifted one hand, ready to knock. Olsen is a great friend, but there are more important things to focus on at the moment. Just saying Yilch replied. The hunter let the back of her knuckle knock on the door. After a few taps, all three waited for a response. Pure silence ensued for the next few moments. Looks like he is not here Mwa replied. Tama put one hand on the handle. She pushed in slowly, making the door creak. The inside of the office was dark, bordering on pitch black. The only light came from the tinted sunlight that could penetrate the thick purple curtain that covered the window on the opposite side of the room. And you'd be right Tama said with disappointment as she pulled the door back, closing it behind her. Are we going to go out and try to find him? Yilch asked. Of course. Let's go ask Olsen for some help Tama answered. The hunter then tilted her head back and pressed the palm of her hand against her forehead. Now I'm going to have a hard time looking at him the same way because of what you mentioned. You got a crush on him too. Yilch said with larger than normal eyes. I know finding out that someone has feelings for you can make you feel the same way about them. Tama shook her head. Nope. He's just a friend. But now because of you, I've got a guilty conscience. And I haven't even talked to him since you told me about your little observation. Oh. Maybe I should have kept that little comment to myself then. It's fine, Yilch. Tama led the other two down the corridor. You were just looking out for me. It is a good thing that we are more worried about dealing with cutthroats, genkins and mysterious insects instead of trying to blossom a romance. Mwa patted Tama on the back. Isn't that correct? Of course Tama said uneasily. There's a lot at stake right now. We've got to keep our attention on what really matters. It wasn't long before all three exited the building. Olsen was seated crisscross on the ground, his back resting against the wall while his eyes were shut. Hey Olsen Tama said. She stared down at him, keeping her hands resting on her hips. 
She gave the guard a moment to respond only to receive a soft snore in return. Olsen, she said louder. Her foot nudged his knee, making him jump up. Ha! Huh. What? His eyes bounced around in front of him until stopping upon seeing Tama looking down at him with a frigid scowl. This is what Pharoport depends on in case of an attack. Mwa bemoaned. This city is truly doomed then. Hey lady, you don't know what I've been through. Also darted up to his feet and straightened the fabric that covered his chainmail. Both looked at each other. Mwa's expression changed first, turning to all immediately. The guard took a step back, looking regretful from his statement. And I can say for certain that you have no idea what I have experienced. Mwa pointed one finger at Olsen's chest. So do not give me some excuse about you having a rough life. You are a member of the Pharaoh Port Guard. It is your duty to make sure to deal with any threats of your city. You think I'm just going to let some foreigner tell me what to? Olsen cut his response short when he saw Tama wave a hand at him from the corner of his eyes. Don't. I've known you for a long time. And even though it has only been a few days, I feel like I've known Mwa for just as long. I can say for certain that she's telling the truth. What she's been through within the past week, is unfathomable. Olsen looked down. He placed his hands behind his back. Sorry. I didn't know. If you want to be useful, take us to Chasen as fast as possible. We have an emergency to deal with. The sooner we meet him, the better Mwa said. Sure, sure. Last time I saw him he was somewhere inside the governor's main building. You know how the other guards are with letting common folk inside there. It's going to be a hassle just getting to the door. Tama huffed and flicked her hairs to the side with a swift movement of her head. I'm guessing you're going to want me to get you two in, right? Olsen pointed towards himself with his thumbs. It would be appreciated Mwa replied. You know I'm not that high ranking, right Tama? Just because I'm a member of the Pharoport Guard doesn't mean I get full access to whatever part of Pharoport that I want. It's not like we're asking for access to the governor's personal quarters. We just need to get to Chasen and soon. Tama stepped closer to Olsen. She locked her eyes with his. The woman placed one hand on his shoulder, looking at him with a face of desperation. Please. I know you can figure something out. Olsen's head turned to the side, abruptly breaking the eye contact he made with Tama. Shucks. Maybe I can work something out. They're not that strict about the outer parts of the building. It's just once you get towards the governor's personal areas is when they start taking rules seriously. So you will help us then. Tama exclaimed as she put on a smile. I'll do my best. I could make up something on the spot in case we get questioned. He then faced Mwa. As I won my turn some heads though. Just say she's, from an exchange program Tama said. Exchange program. Both Mwa and Olsen said simultaneously. Like, ah, uh, with schools. Just say she's here to learn more about Remcroft culture. Maybe even add in a line about trying to help ease the two nations into peace. They'll never believe that last part. Fine. Just keep it at a student exchange then. Tama stood at Mwara's side and used both of her hands in a presenting pose. Does she look like someone that poses any kind of threat to you? The guard looked at Mwara from the top down. Guess not. Exactly. And what about you? Olsen pointed towards Tama. Home. She tapped the tip of her chin with her finger. I'm her translator. You speak Ziwaon. Olsen said with surprise. No, not really. But I doubt anyone else here does. Tama turned towards the semstress. Say something in Ziwaon. Mwa cleared her throat and spoke a single sentence in her native tongue. She said, I am from Ziwo. Tama smiled, bobbing her head as she shifted her gaze between the two. See. Wasn't that convincing? 
We need to get going Wa said sternly. That last plan of yours worked. Even if it was just barely. So I will trust you on this one. Still haven't been convinced that I know what I'm doing, alas. Maybe you are just very, very lucky. The governor's building is just a straight shot on this path. Olsen raised one hand and pointed at the massive castle-like structure in the middle of the area. Today has been a bit slow so I don't think we'll be seeing too many people on our way there. That means you won't have to put on the coughing act, Mwatama remarked. Just keep close. Olsen yawned as he stretched his arms high above his head. Right. Let's get this over with. My shift ends soon and I don't want to be here any longer than I have to. Lead the way. Tama extended her hands at the stone trail that led to the governor's estate. Begrudgingly, the guard listened to Tama's command and began to walk. The others trailed close. Yilch lingered next to Tama's ear, cupping his hand in front of his mouth as he began to whisper. Glad I told you, ha, huh, he said softly. Tama nodded in silence with a big grin. You girls sure are making a big deal out of whatever it is you want to talk to Chasen about. It is very important Mwa shot back. It is so important, it might force you to do your job. The guard turned his head over his shoulder. What do you mean? You have heard of the Genka clan, correct? Mwa asked. Yeah. They have been to Faroport. Lots of people from all over the world stop by here. Don't see what the big deal is. You think Genkans are to be trusted. They are violent. Brutal. Without morals. Whatever it is that they are up to can only be devastating for the people of this town. But Chasen doesn't handle the town's defense. He's just a researcher. There's nothing he can do in case we're attacked. We found a peculiar creature from their boats. Neither one of us knows what it is or what it is capable of. But what we do know for certain is that the Genkan captain is interested in it. He stole the body of the creature from me Tama added. My hunter's instinct tells me that something sinister is about to transpire. And it's essential that we get as much information as possible. Sounds like it's above my pair grade. Olsen's reply was accompanied with a chuckle. But it is your duty. Mwa called out. There is more to being a protector of your home than the coin you earn. Olsen shot Mwa a cold and brief glance before turning around and continuing to lead. I think I liked you better when you had your head down and faked coughing. Can we go back to that plan? Here we are, as promised. Olsen stood in the middle of the path leading towards the governor's building. Up ahead, another pair of guards were visible, blocking off the oak doors underneath the stone archway. Are those two going to give us any trouble? Tama asked. Olsen squinted his eyes. Those two? Yeah. They're sticklers for the rules. They won't let anyone inside unless they work for the governor or accompanied by a member of the Pharaoh port guard. Tama slapped the side of Olsen's arm with the back of her hand. That's perfect then. Anyone but me, that is. I'm still just a low-ranking recruit. Do they know that? Tama asked. Dot Olsen shook his head. No. Then I don't see the problem. Just pretend you're a higher rank and they'll let us through, right? I am from another nation and already I can tell that Olsen is not a high rank just by looking at him while said as she stuck one hand out towards the guard accompanying them. This might be the time where I have to intrude on your plan, Tama. No need to be so harsh on the man, Mwa. I've known Olsen for a good while. He just needs a bit of confidence. I'm sure he can do it. The hunter turned her head towards Yilch. She gave him a wink and he returned the notion. The semstress saw the two exchange looks, only to give them both an expression of slight annoyance. You really think so? Tama. Olsen replied, his eyes widening and voice somewhat shaky as he looked at her. You really think I could pass off as a high-ranking god? Oh, I know it. She placed a single hand on the man's shoulder, angling him so his light blue eyes locked with hers. 
Remember when that flock of crimson larks was causing trouble over by the botanical garden? They were eating all the berries from the bushes and were leaving a mess everywhere. What did you do? I, ran at them. With my sword he replied awkwardly. Exactly. Tama grinned then gave Olsen a gentle jab on the shoulder. And those birds went flying. You took care of that problem like that. She then snapped her finger. Crimson larks are known to peck back if they're bothered. But that didn't deter you at all. That took at least a bit of confidence. Don't you agree? I guess. Olsen shrugged his shoulders and how could I forget about the time you protected the governor's district from that man threatening to beat down anyone that got in his way. Are you talking about that drunkard that came stumbling to the gate? Assassin. Drunkard. Could have been either. Pretty sure that was just a drunkard, Tama. Regardless, he made threats. If you can deal with that, then getting us past a couple of your fellow guards shouldn't be a problem at all. You just need to use some of that same confidence you had before. You plan on getting promoted, don't you? I, guess. Tama and Mwa looked at each other. The semstress looked at her with disapproval. You guess? Tama asked. Yeah. I don't know if I want to keep doing this. Especially now that you two are telling me that I might have to deal with Genkins. If you did not want to fight, then why are you a member of the Pharaoh Port Guard? Mwa rested one hand on her hip while her other hand pointed at Olsen. For the money. Obviously. Getting paid to stand around and talk to people. It's the easiest way to get paid in town. Besides being a beggar, I suppose. Mwa turned around, flinging her hands in the air. Tama. You deal with him. Let me know if Olsen ever musters up the courage to do his job. If I have to listen to him any longer, I might just, ah. Uh. Mwa walked further down the path with Yolch trailing behind her. With her back to the other two, she crossed her arms while the ghost started talking to her. What's your friend's problem, huh? Olsen blurted out. He looked at Mwa with narrowed eyes. She's been through a lot, all right. We've got a war going on. Everyone's been through a lot. Doesn't mean she can just come here and berate me for wanting to survive. I know, Olsen. I know. She's really a sweet person once you get to know her. Kind of like you. I just think the two of you have gotten off on the wrong foot. Tama reached down and held on to Olsen's hand, clutching it tight with both of hers. But we are being genuine when we say how important it is that we see Chasen. There is a lot on the line right now. And you are essential in making sure that Pharaoh Port stays safe. Great. The guard took in a deep breath and angled his head upwards. He took a glance towards the pair of men blocking the entrance. They remained motionless like statues. Both were fully clad in armor that glistened from the afternoon sun. They wielded their long spears at angle so that they obstructed the front door. This is exactly what I was afraid of. Do you know how much trouble I could get into if they find out I left my post? Tama still held on to Olsen's hand. No, I don't. What would happen? They'll put me on cleaning duty. That's it. Tama blinked twice as she continued to stare at the guard. Not getting sent to the front lines to fight against Zaiwo. No time spent in a cell. Just cleaning duty. You ever clear a waste depository? Olsen. Cleaning duty is not that bad. Definitely not as bad as what could happen to Pharaohport if we keep wasting time hesitating. Now, we're going to need you to get us in there as soon as possible. Just follow the story we came up with and you should be fine. I'll even answer any questions that they might have. You sure about that, Tama? I don't want to have to go through for a second round of rinsing and scrubbing if I don't have to. I am. And even if you do, I'm sure you'll be fine. A bit of hard work can do you a lot of good. Tama laughed, prompting Olsen to do so as well. You've always had a way with words, Tama. 
Olsen rolled his neck and then looked in Wara's direction. She remained with her back turned while conversing with Yilch. Is your friend all right? the guard asked. Looks like she's talking to herself. Tama looked behind her and saw the semstress mouth move as Yilch continued to chat with her. Yeah, she's fine. She's doing a Ziwon chant. In their culture, it's a way of calming down. Focusing on Chi. Or something like that. She's just stressed out over all this. Aha. Uh -huh. Go ahead and get her. We'll go with your plan and hope those two are lenient when it comes to rookies bringing guests along. The hunter took Olsen's arm and pulled him close. She gave him a few pats on the back. Thanks. If we get through all this, I'll owe you one. Hey. If I get caught, you'll still owe me. I don't want to clean up the latrines all by myself because I made the mistake of trying to help you two out. That's more than fair. Now just give me a moment. She ended the hug to face Mwa. The hunter raised one hand above her head and waved her hand. Hey Mwa, she said in a loud voice. Come back over here. Mwa and Yilch both turned around and made their way to the others. The semstress made sure to not look directly at Olsen and instead made eye contact with only Tama. Did your friend muster enough courage to? Tama raised one hand, making Mwa stop her sentence short. Yes. He's going to help us out. No need to stoke the fire any further. From either one of you. She glanced over at Olsen. Understand. Yes both Mwa and Olsen replied simultaneously. Good. And please. No more bickering, all right? We've already got a lot to deal with. You two trying to get on one another's nerves won't do us any favors. We're on the same side, remember? No need to focus our anger on each other when we might have to deal with Genkins. Fair point Olsen said Mwa. Tama said with a drawn out tone. Looking at Mwa with an inquisitive look fine the semstress replied before sighing good. You ready now, Olsen? No more hesitation. The guard took in a deep breath and rubbed his hands together. Just going to rehearse what I'm going to say in my head on the way there. The guard turned around while Mwa and Tama stood behind in formation. They remained close together, forming a compact group as they traveled down the stone path to the governor's building. The two men protecting the entrance maintained their stance, not shifting their eyes away from the horizon despite the approaching party. Olsen walked up to the spearman on the left. He kept his posture upright with his hands behind his back in an effort to maintain an air of confidence. Even after being only a couple of feet in front of the man, he still refused to maintain eye contact. Olsen turned around once more, looking at Tama and Mwa. The hunter smiled, nodding slightly, telling him without words that she believed in him by winking and giving a thumbs up. Mwara's demeanor was a starkly different. Her frown showed that she was unenthused. Olsen then quickly turned forward to face the man blocking off the entrance. With a brief clearing of his throat, he had finally caught the man's attention. Excuse me, Sir Olsen said clearly. The armored individual didn't respond. I have two guests that I'm escorting through the governor's building. Olsen and the other guard stared at each other in silence. Mwa and Tama looked from the man protecting the door to the weapon that he had in front of it. The two spears remained crossed. We should have just waited Mwa whispered to the hunter. As a member of the Pharaoh Port Guard, I am requesting permission to enter the governor's estate to escort these two guests. Olsen maintained a clear and steady demeanor. His posture was upright. His face was calm yet serious. All the while, he remained steady and kept eye contact with his fellow man. On what grounds, the other guard replied, his voice booming. An academic exchange, sir. Olsen stomped one foot and put his hand up to his head, making a salute. The man blocking the door tilted his body to the side just enough to see past Olsen and peer at the Ziwon woman that stood behind him. Is that girl the subject of the exchange? Olsen then followed suit, turning his head just enough to look at an idol Noir. Yes sir. 
she is here for cultural reason. And the other woman is the translator. Tama nudged Mwa in the shoulder. The semstress looked towards her. With a short nod of her head, Tama implied that she wanted Mwa to go through with their plan. With a startled look, Mwa cleared her throat and began to speak. She stood beside Olsen and gave the guard of the door a friendly smile accompanied by an equally friendly wave. She then spoke in perfect Ziwon to the guard's confusion. Tama then darted next to Olsen and the man guarding the entrance. She said that you have a very nice smile the hunter said to the armored man with a wink. Even through his facial hair, it was clear that he was blushing. Tell her I said thank you. The man blocking the door said in the same tone he had been carrying. Although it was still evident that he was trying his best to hide his embarrassment. Tama looked at Mwa. She then muttered some incoherent words with the utmost of confidence, trying mimic the Ziwaon language as closely as possible. Mwa smiled again then looked at the guard before giving a small bow. Will you grant us access to the governor's building? Olsen asked. They have an appointment with Chasen and time is of the essence. Her boat for Ziwa leaves later this evening. The first guard turned to his partner. They both looked at each other across the entryway in silence, giving one another contemplative looks. After an unbearable moment of quiet, the man that Olsen talked to turned back to face him. The door guard pulled his spear back, prompting his partner to do the same. The wooden door to the building was now unobscured. I don't see any reason not to. If you're looking for Chasen, he should be on the second floor. Saw him chatting with some other researchers before reporting in for my shift. Much appreciated. Olsen let a faint smile slip as he adjusted the sword fastened to his hip and pushed the door open. He held it wide, waving at Mwa to invite her in first. Both her and Tama entered through first with Olsen letting the door close behind them. You did a fantastic job back there. Tama whispered, unable to hide her giggling. A gentle jab landed on the back of Olsen's shoulder, making him stagger forward while keeping a soft smile. See what happens when you just follow my plans. Even I must admit that Olsen can put on the act of being a proper guard Mwa said quietly as she walked down the wide corridor. A long blue rug stretched out from the doorway for as far as long as the hallway extended. You're on your way to bigger and better things, eh lad? Tama patted Olsen on the back, making him grin nervously and run his hands through messy red hair. Don't you two need to see Chasen? Let's just focus on that for now so I can't get back to my post as soon as possible. I'm not one to talk about my interest in careers. I just go wherever life takes me. For once, I agree with you. Mwa continued to lead, looking around the long and chilly interior of the building. The area was mostly silent save for the occasional person walking in and out among the multitude of doors. They wore more elaborate gowns and robes adorned with jewelry. As they left their rooms, some would turn to Mwa and Tama and look at them with both confusion and worry before hurrying back to their routine. Didn't think we'd stand out this much Tama whispered. Hopefully no one will complain Olsen replied. If they reprimand me, both of you are going to help me with cleaning duties. Then hurry and take us to the second floor so that will not be the case Mwa replied in a voice just above a whisper. Olsen took lead of the group and me a sharp right turn down the first intersection. An identical looking hallway extended just as far as the one they had just left. The guard darted his head around nervously, looking at the surrounding area. Both Mwa and Tama stared at him, with the hunter tapping her foot as she waited for Olsen to continue the procession. You know where you're going? Tama asked. Of course I do he replied with some hesitation. It is my job after all. We just are, keep going straight. The staircase to the next floor should be a straight walk from here. Olsen continued forward, leading the group to the other end of the hall. It ended with another intersection that went in two opposite directions, making the guard pause once more upon reaching the fork. Let's just go left Tama said as she stepped past Olsen. With a brisk pace, she took control of the group. 
a short jaunt brought the party to a tall staircase. I was going to pick left Olsen muttered under his breath. I believe Utama replied with a wink. All three continued upwards. The floor above mimicked that of the floor below save for the paintings that lined the walls. A few other guards roamed the area, some giving the trio an odd look as they made their way to the steps. Olsen took lead again, giving his fellow members of the Pharaoh Port Guard a quick nod, acknowledging that the women were accompanying him. Muffled conversations echoed throughout the empty space. The individual words of the various discussions taking place behind the walls couldn't be deciphered, but the various tones and emotions could be gathered. This floor sounds busy Tama whispered. She paused, pressing her hand against Olsen's chest to make him halt. Wait. I think I heard Jason's voice. The hunter angled her ear to the closest door. The other two leaned in. Instead of a male voice. The dampened sound of a feminine laugh flooded the hallway. That certainly doesn't sound like him Olsen said softly. You know he's got a way with women. I can only assume he's working his charm on some upcoming academy instructor. Tama then pressed her ear against the wood of the door again. A deep voice chuckled before talking in a low yet smooth tone. The words were indistinguishable, but Tama still nodded in confidence. Yeah, that's him. You going to interrupt his little meeting? Olsen asked. We're here now. Might as well. The hunter knocked on the door. Jason cut his sentence short, saying excuse me just loud enough for everyone outside of the room to hear clearly. Tama took a step back to let the researcher open the door. Oh. Tama. And Olsen. Jason said clearly. With no wall to stifle his speech, every word came out in a steady manner. He quickly adjusted his small, rimmed glasses that rested on his wrinkled nose so that they covered up his vibrant green eyes. With one hand he stroked the dark grey hairs of his beard and looked at Mwa. And I see you've brought a friend along. The semstress nodded her head and spoke in a few sentences in fluid Ziwaon before bowing her entire body. Tama looked back at Mwa then towards the researcher in front of her. She said that it is a pleasure to meet you. Well, ah, uh, tell her I said likewise. And perhaps that she should get a new translator. Because that is clearly not what she said. Mwa's eyes grew. You speak Ziwaon, she asked with surprise. Just a bit. I picked up some from the locals during my time studying their plant life. Jason stepped backwards, letting the three outside see the woman that he had in the room with him. She was younger than him by a few years, giving her a mature and sophisticated look that was made more evident by the long and flowing gown she wore and the white gloves that covered her hands. I have a guest here with me at the moment. Perhaps we could discuss this some other time. I'm free all day tomorrow. It's an emergency, Jason. Both Tama's voice and face took a serious turn. How bad of an emergency. There is a lot on the line Tama continued with her diatone. Lives. Innocent lives. The woman in the back of the room became flustered, turning her head awkwardly from the conversation. Jason huffed silently before pressing a hand against his guest's arm. I apologize. It seems there is an emergency looming. Would it be all right if we met up again some other time? The guest lowered her head. With a brisk walk, she headed out the front door, saying excuse me as she brushed past Mwa. Jason maintained a frustrated look as he watched his former guest vanish down the corridor. I'm sorry if we interrupted something, Jason Tama said quietly. No need to be sorry if what you're saying is true and there is a genuine emergency. The researcher got off the frame of the door and stepped to the side, gesturing for the others to step inside. Now, start off slowly. What is it exactly that you need to see me for? We found something inside of a grizzly wolf just the other day. Tama stood with her arms crossed in front of her chest. She leaned her back against the closed door while Mwa and Olsen stood to either side of the researcher. Inside. Jason asked before adjusting his glasses again. What exactly was it? A maggot-like creature Mwa replied. 
The researcher turned his head to the semstress. I will need more of a description than that. Tama spread her hands apart roughly a foot apart. I'd say it was about this size. Brown. Ugly. Coated in gunk. The researcher stroked his beard. That could be a large number of creatures. What else can tell me about what you found? Tell him about how the grizzly wolf acted Mwa said. Oh. Right. It was far more aggressive than any other grizzly wolf that I had ever seen before. It stood on its hind legs and attacked unprovoked. You slain the grizzly wolf. We had to Tama said with disappointment. It was either him or us. You didn't hold on to the specimen. We did Mwa said. But it was stolen. By Genkins. Chasen blinked twice upon hearing the name of the clan. Genkins you say? That can't be a good sign. The researcher moved past Mwa and Olsen and headed over to the other side of the room. A long bookshelf covered the entire wall. Chasen ran his finger along the spines of the books, stopping halfway through the top shelf. From the limited information you've given, there could be a few possibilities. He pulled a thick book from the shelf and it opened it. The researcher flipped through the pages before plopping onto the wooden desk to his right. Is it something to be worried about? Tama asked as she walked to the researcher's desk. She peered over Chasen's shoulder and looked at the pages on laid out on the table. If the Genkins are invested, then there is definitely something to be worried about. Chasen pointed to one of the pages of the open book, his finger on a detailed sketch of a maggot-like creature. Was it this one? He asked the two women. Mwa and Tama looked to each other before looking down at the sketch. The hunter shrugged her shoulders. Looks like it to me. What do you say, Mwa? I suppose. The researcher frowned. That didn't sound certain to me. He flipped through a couple more pages, stopping on another set of sketches. How about any of these? Which one do you think looks closest to what you found? Mwa moved in closer. Both women scanned the multitude of sketches on the pages. All of the creatures depicted looked similar save for the small variations in width, height and shape. They all look kind of the same to me, Chase and Tama replied. We could have seen any of these Mwa said. That's what I was worried about. From the information you have told me, there is one possibility that worries me the most. The researcher flipped back to the first page and placed his finger on the lone sketch. This one right is particularly dangerous. It is a parasite known as a insectus. They're known to crawl inside of a host and feed off their blood. They lay eggs in the host before leaving to repeat the process. All the while, they excrete a toxin that alters their behavior and thoughts. It makes them more aggressive. Violent. And they multiply quickly. Especially in areas with large numbers of organisms. Like. Abbas Forest. Tama muttered, her dismay present in her voice. That would be a prime location for a breeding ground. Seeing as how you already found one stowed away inside of a grizzly wolf, there's no telling how much they've spread at his point. A short silence ensued. Mwa and Tama stared back at one another silence while Chasen remained focused on the sketch on the page. He ran his fingers through his hair, shaking his head as he read through the text. Can they affect humans? Olsen asked shakily. Indeed. The species does not matter. Any living organism is susceptible to becoming a host. That is why the Genkin must have been so terrified Mwa added. What do you mean? Chasen quickly turned his head behind him. Please, tell me everything you know about the Genkins and their relationship with the creature that you found. I stowed away on their boat. As I escaped, a crate of those maggots was smashed and they fell into the sea. The Genkin that tried to stop me became terrified once one attached onto his chest. Are you telling me, that an entire crate's worth of insectus escaped off the coast of the island? Mwa nodded her head slowly. Yes sir. This is terrible then. If one managed to reach the shore, then I know for certain that more are here. 
Abbas Forest has been compromised if that is the case. Tell me, have you seen any others besides the one you extracted from the Grizzalu Ulf earlier? Both Mwa and Tama shook their heads. No sir they replied in unison. What about any other reports of animals acting violent or peculiar? Have you heard any murmurings of the sort? Not that I'm aware of Tama replied. So there is a possibility that the majority of the insectus drowned once they fell into the ocean. That only makes the next step more difficult if it means finding one will be difficult. Why is that? Mwa asked. The researcher lifted his head from the pages of his book. He looked up at the wooden ceiling of the room and sighed. I will have to get in touch with the governor to discuss enacting an extermination measure. Oh no Tama groaned. That won't go over well. Extermination measure, a confused Mwa stated. Chasen went over to his bookshelf, this time taking a thin book from the bottom corner. He quickly flipped to one of the pages in the back. An extermination measure shall be put in place to deal with the infestation of dangerous, deadly and otherwise malicious entities. To put forth such a measure, the governor of the municipality must send a correspondence to the Remcroftian Central Authority. If the correspondence is accepted, a fleet of vessels will be sent to assist in the evacuation of the local population along with a platoon of exterminators to deal with the threat. It's a logistics nightmare, Mwatama spouted. I've only seen it happen once in my entire life. I was only just a girl, but I remember it vividly. I remember it quite clearly as well Chasen said. The Pyre Rabbit Infestation By the time the correspondence reached the mainland of Remcroft, it was already too late for many of the people who had been attacked by the creatures. Not to mention that not enough boats were sent to hold the entire population. Some were forced to stay on the island while the exterminators eliminated the pests for two months. Spent the good portion of the evacuation rocking back and forth in the hull of the ship. Was not a pleasant experience Tama said. And that was Governor Malko's last term. He was ousted right after. Seems to me that an extermination measure is not something that the current governor would not want to utilize unless it was absolutely necessary Mwa stated. And you'd be correct. I work very closely with Governor Ashana. She's already not too well received after that tax raise. Convincing her to send the proper correspondence will require absolute proof of a threat. And that's why you need a sample of an insectus, right? Otherwise, the governor is just going to sit atop her throne like usual and just hope things play out for the best Olsen said. Exactly. If I can present her with actual evidence, it will increase the likeliness of her going through with the motion. Not guarantee. Mwa asked. Unfortunately, I doubt it. But having slim chances is a lot better than a guaranteed rejection if I simply propose the idea with only the possibility of insectus being on the island. Mwa and Tama looked at each other again. Looks like we're heading back to Abbas Forest. Are you all right with fighting another Grizzle Wolf? Perhaps we can find something smaller to take on this time Mwa said as she pinched her fingers together. There were, special circumstances, that allowed me to take out that Grizzly Wolf. Remember? Oh, right. Take Olsen with you Chasen said as he nodded his head towards the guard. Olsen raised an eyebrow and pointed to his chest. Me. Why do I need to go along? Do you think these two girls can take on a ravenous creature themselves? There is a lot on the line here. If what they say is true, we will need a sample of an insectus to show to the governor. I would help out, but if something were to happen to me then who would convince her to send the correspondence? I could get someone else to do it. My shift was about to end. Besides, there are way better fighters in the Faro Port Guard that could handle this. Olsen then looked at an irked Mwa. She managed to take on a grizzly wolf. If anything, they should be defending me. The researched, stood over Olsen, looking down at him with a stern gaze. I will put in a good word for you if you three all return with what is needed. I know the governor is looking to fill the role left by one of the recent retirees. Over by her private garden. 
I heard it is very lax in that area. Olsen turned his head and saw Tama standing behind him. She placed a hand on his shoulder. We could use all the help we can get. The guard groaned. Fine. I'll help you two out. Good. 